Hey guys, Epic here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're actually back for another Borderlands video. I know you guys have been waiting for a little while now, but we're back with a Borderlands video today and I want to go over the five things that for me Borderlands 3 does not get enough credit for. I've definitely been outspoken in the past on the things I did not like about Borderlands 3 and also the things I liked, but today I want to shed some light on some of the things that I think don't get enough praise. But before we start the video, just a reminder that you can use code NNG at the advanced GG checkout if you want to save yourself some money on a cleaner more reliable form of energy i just got dream team punch and it is absolutely amazing so if you do pick some up please tweet me on twitter at epic NNG. and with that being said let's get right into it in no particular order now i'm going to start at number five here and i want to talk about weapon customization borderlands 3 was a first in the series from adding new ways to customize your character ranging from things such as the player quarters which we'll talk about a bit later to the weapon customization itself while playing the game you could find weapon skins and trinkets that you could equip and put on basically any gun universally and this made for a lot of customization at endgame. When playing Wonderlands I don't really notice much weapon customization at all, in fact a lot of the weapons just tend to look the same no matter what, so when I went back to Borderlands 3 and checked out some stuff for this list I noticed that weapon customization was a big part of the variety in the game. Having a way to just make your weapon feel like it's yours, that level of personalization I think is really special and hopefully, hopefully it comes back in Borderlands 4. Now, moving on, this is going to be one that's slightly out of left field, and I don't think a lot of you guys are going to see this one coming, because at number four, what I actually want to shed some light on here that I think BO3 needs to get more credit for is radiation. When Borderlands 3 first launched, we knew we were going to be getting two new elements in the form of the returning cryo and also radiation, and everybody had rumored that radiation would feature much like Slag did in Borderlands 2, but when it actually came around, it was a lot better implemented. Radiation was basically a dot that could spread to nearby enemies, and when killing an enemy that was radiated they would explode potentially killing enemies around them and what i liked about radiation is that even though it was really powerful and really fun to play around with it was also really risky to the player as they could blow themselves up and also against armor bars it wasn't the best choice so it was implemented in a way which felt really really strong but also really balanced in some situations and i can appreciate that a lot i don't think in wonderlands dark magic has the same kind of effect at least not on me as a player and i really really like what they did with radiation in Borderlands 3 and I'd be open to seeing it return in Borderlands 4. So yeah, I know that's going to be a little bit random for some of you guys, like oh my god, he's putting an element on the list, but really, I do think radiation was handled exceptionally well. But let's move on to number 3, and I want to talk about action skills, but more specifically the action skill augment system. Now, typically in a Borderlands game, we are just used to having one action skill with our Vault Hunters and only being able to use that one action skill. Borderlands 3, however, took things up a notch, adding action skill augments which now allowed you to completely change the way your action skill works with just the equip of one skill. So not only did a character like Zane have his four action skills but he also had 20 action skills due to what the augments did for him. It was a really really great way to change up the game in a meaningful way without rendering the OG action skill useless. It really did feel like an evolution of what we were already familiar with and I can appreciate that a lot. I love when they don't stray too far away from the source material but also do things to improve it. So good job on that one Gearbox, please bring that back in the future. Now, coming in at number two, something which I'm not that strong on, but I still think it deserves its time in the spotlight, is the player housing system, or specifically player quarters. This was a feature added in to allow players to display items on their wall, set up wall decorations, and also have a place to store their bank. Now, while admittedly I'm not crazy about this feature, I will say that having that added level of customization and again, personalization in a Borderlands game is fantastic and I don't think you can ever go wrong with it. The only changes I'd make to the player housing system is to allow you to change the color of walls, maybe the color of floors, set up different decorations apart from just wall decorations, and perhaps even have your own quick change station in there. Here's hoping we see some improvements and the return of it in the next Borderlands game. Now, let's move on to number one. And honestly, up until this point, I've hit you guys with some out of left field picks, but I just can't do this video without giving some proper justice to one of the best implementations we've seen in a Borderlands game. And while it wasn't introduced with Borderlands 3, I still think the seasonal events need some more praise. Of course, in the past, we'd seen stuff like the Snowman Headhunter pack in Borderlands 2, which was technically a seasonal event, but in Borderlands 3, they took it up a notch, adding event cards where you could complete them for specific rewards 
mods allowing you to get seasonal themed gear and I really really like that. I'm also a big fan of the places they take you to like Heck or Joey Ultraviolet's Villa and honestly there's really not much to say about seasonal events that hasn't already been said before. The community was screaming for Gearbox to make them permanent for months and months and months until they eventually did and when they finally were made permanent players loved it making cartels one of the most popular pieces of content in the game if it wasn't already and allowing people to get a fresh shot at getting all of that seasonal loot which only added to their builds at endgame. So yes to end off this list I absolutely had to talk about seasonal events because to me it's just something which needs another light shining on it and I would love to see this return in the future because it really does add a lot to Borderlands as a franchise. Though with that being said that's going to do it for my list guys so thank you so much for watching I really appreciate all the support and it feels good to be back doing another list on Borderlands. Let me know what you want to see me cover next on here and I'll check you all in the next one. Take it easy and stay safe.